洗冤记录 or collected cases of injustice recidified, or washing away of wrongs, is the oldest book on forensic science in the world. It was completed in 1247 CE, which is during the Song Dynasty, by a man named Song Ci. Song Ci was a government official who started working as the Ti Dian Xing Yu Gong Shi of Guangdong. He was put in charge of catching and sentencing criminals, kind of like a combination of a judge and a prosecutor. When he began his post. He discovered that the department was rife with corruption, and many cases were left unresolved. He went on to resolve around 200 cases in eight months. Overseeing the coroner was a part of his duties, and his success in Guangdong led him to become the Ti Dian Xing Yu Gong Shi in other places. In 1245 CE, he began to compile the collected cases. Of injustice recidified from his own experience and other books that recorded criminal cases. Song Ci wrote in the book, "Should there be any inaccuracy in an autopsy report, injustice will remain with the deceased as well as the living. A wrongful death sentence without justice may claim one or more additional lives, which would in turn result in feuds and revenges, prolonging the tragedy." In order to avoid any miscarriage of justice, the coroner must immediately examine the case personally, showing his dedication to his job. He also wrote in the book, 告状切不可信，须是详细检验，勿要从实 meaning the testimony is unreliable. The case must be examined in detail. The report must be based on the truth. The book has five chapters and fifty-three title sections, and was meant to be a comprehensive handbook for coroners. It has discussions on the inquest process, how to approach difficult cases, and most importantly, how to go about examining corpses in various locations, states of decay, and how to determine the cause of death. Most of the book is dedicated to different types of death, and what signs to look for when examining a body. Just to list a few section titles: twelve, examining bodies that have not been buried; twenty-one, death from drowning; thirty-eight, trampling to death by horse or buffalo; forty-five, death from sexual excess; and fifty-two. Methods for restoring life. The book also features illustrations of human anatomy. Here's an example of a case from the book. A local peasant's body was found by the road. At first, people thought he was killed by a bandit, but none of his belongings were taken. His body had multiple stab wounds that seemed to be from a sickle. The investigator asked. The man's wife, if he had any enemies, she said he didn't have any enemies, although another man in the village had tried and failed to borrow money from them a few days ago. The investigator then ordered the villagers to bring their sickles to him, stating that anyone who disobeyed will be arrested. He laid the sickles on the ground and waited. It was in the middle of summer, and pretty soon. All the flies in the area were landing on one sickle in particular. The owner of the sickle was brought in front of the investigator. It was the man who tried to borrow money from the victim. He, of course, denied the accusation. But when the investigator pointed out that the flies were only attracted to his sickle because they could sense the blood on it, the man confessed the crime and was arrested. The book was used by generations of government officials as a guide to investigating murders, and was translated into many languages, including Japanese, French, and English. And that was a brief introduction to the oldest book on forensic science in the world. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe.